Today we're going to talk about composition and the struggle with composition. I know I've had that struggle. <laughs> I either I when I first started, I didn't really know what composition was, and then when I did get into it, I had a very limited knowledge of different techniques. So I would do the same, the rule of thirds, and that sort of thing. And then I kind of had a an epiphany where I kind of realized that this composition was the pathway to creativity. And then I learned over 100 different techniques and tools and became completely paralyzed by the idea because I was trying to force all these composition into photos that, uh, that weren't relevant. So uh, I developed a system that I'm really excited to tell you about and it helps you become more intuitive with your setup. It's a step-by-step -step system that makes it super easy to stack compositional techniques with minimal effort. All right, let's get into it. So my background, as you know, working more than 20 years in the field of photography, it was very technical. I connected with technical brain and always thought that I didn't have that creative gene and all that side of the brain didn't work so much for me. I was more technical and creativity was something that I just didn't understand. And like I go into a gallery and look at art and go, hmm. Yeah, that looks nice. <laughs> Not actually understand anything about it. And so creativity for me was kind of this elusive creature, if you like. I just couldn't... Uh, uh yeah, I just couldn't connect with it. I mean, when we're younger, we're all in, in, in preschool, primary school, kindergarten, then we're all good at finger painting. We can all do it. And some of us are better than others because we kind of connect with that side of our brain. And as we get older, we're encouraged more with the things that we're good at. And it kind of just gets reinforced into us as we get older. And for me, now I, I, I identify myself as both technical and creative because I've applied that, I've decided that, and now I practice that. And by, by practicing more and more, you become more creative and give yourself permission to make mistakes and just explore and have fun with it. So some of us do have a, an analytical thinking and we're, we're problem solvers, and that's fantastic in photography. It really is. That doesn't hold you back from your creativity because if you take a photo and it's not quite right, well, you can problem solve and you can tinker with it and go, okay, I need to change the settings or uh, let's try a different angle. So that's the creative side of you as well, going, okay, let's try this angle. Oh, that looks nice. That works. And then the technical side goes, oh, that works because now I've introduced these other leading lines or now because I've changed my position, uh, it doesn't just look better. It looks better because now I have more emphasis in this part of the scene. So it's just... It's really cool. It's really exciting. For me, like I said, it was kind of elusive. I didn't understand it. It was going out for a coffee with my professional photographer friend, Kyle, from 20 West Photography. G'day, Kyle. He explained to me, because I, I, we sat down, I talked about my frustrations and how, you know, I've got this expensive gear. Uh, and uh, even though I started, turned up one day with a smartphone and then from then on, t kept turning up with my iPhone. <laughs> Uh, he, he kind of just would go off on his own and leave me because it was <laughs> he didn't want to be associated with a smartphone photographer. <laughs> but he, he kind of he, he explained to me that all about composition and and I learned so much from Kyle. It was it was amazing and he, and he kind of just all of a sudden I was enjoying photography again and this idea that when we're creating and designing a photo we're doing it with the with the viewer in mind and their visual journey and how they read the photo and for me I, I, that was a totally new concept I've never had to do that in my photography career so it was really exciting because for me I thought okay this is the pathway I just need to create a system a step-by-step -step system to implement um, composition into my photos and then I can be more creative and it would just from there it would just come so I went out and you know I had a dozen different compositional techniques and and I was having fun with them and then I, and I would geek out and learn more and more until I got to a point where it's over a hundred different techniques and tools that I have now and but then it became paralyzing because then I'd go out and take photos and I'd try and implement all these things and I'd be forcing it it got to a point where it just became overwhelming so I just, I couldn't decide. I couldn't decide what to do because it was kind of this information overload. So I had all this, all this knowledge, all these ideas, techniques, principles, all that sort of thing. But I found myself stumped again. I found myself struggling to take photos that I was really happy with. It was like to use the analogy of a writer. I had all the tools, 
but I had writer's block. <laughs> I just I just struggled to put pen to paper. I struggled to capture a photo. And in the end, my sentences would just come out kind of bland. So eventually what I did was I had all my different techniques and tools and I put them all into a mind map. And with the mind map, I was able to then kind of group them all and put them all off. And eventually I got them down into a smaller number. I got them down, I think, to about 12 groups. Smaller, smaller. I kept working on it, working on it. Ones that weren't really relevant to composition that were kind of more like uh, how to take a, a, a you know interesting subject choice or whatever. It's like, does that? Nah, get rid of that. So I culled a lot of it and then managed to pull it down into four groups. And <laughs> it's pretty cool. It's, for me, it's like, oh my gosh, now I've got a four-step system because with these four groups... I actually worked out as well that you could, and I recognized that you could do one, look at one group, then move on to the, so it was sequential. These groups were also sequential. It wasn't just this, this, this. And for me, that was like uh, mind blown. It's, uh, and, and it was, now I, if I, if I grab, if, and, and I look at it like toolboxes. So now I have two, four toolboxes that when I go to set up a photo, I just go, okay, think about the first toolbox. What can I do? Grab this tool, this tool, this tool. Okay, that's great. Next toolbox, what can I do here? Grab these tools. Next toolbox, uh, yeah, I'll grab one tool. Only one of them is relevant to this scene, and that's a big thing. When you go back to your photographic intention and the storytelling, what it is you're trying to capture or communicate, then sometimes some of these toolboxes, you'd have multiples you can, things you can apply to the to the photo. Others you go, oh, yeah, just one thing. Great, no worries, move on to the next. And... What I love about this system, when you play around with it and you, and, you, and you get familiar with it, all this becomes intuitive. You don't have to think about it anymore. And then, you know, if you if you do enroll in this course, this system, you've got an ebook there that you can go back to when you have a bit of a creative slump or uh, or you just not feel it, find yourself going back to those same techniques again. And this is what I did when I had limited understanding or limited knowledge of different compositional techniques. I was using the same ones over and over and over. So this is the key to creativity. And when you when you experience that creative slump, go back to this this resource and you can go, okay, I'm going to play around with that. I'm just going to limit myself to that and go out there and have fun. All right. Do you want to know what the steps are? I've I've talked about them enough. Let's get into it. All right. Step number one is prepare the camera. Uh, so camera preparation and positioning all right so that is you've identified your photographic intention you found your subject or not every photo has to have a subject or a story it could be something that you want the person looking at this photo to the viewer or yourself in years to come look at it and go this is what it's all about and then once you've identified that that's kind of a, a, a step before you do this four-step system you need to know why? <laughs> Why? What's your motivation? What's the stimulus? Why are you taking this photo? Because everything kind of flows from that. So the first step is is positioning of the camera. So that can be how close you get, how far back, what whether you rotate the camera a little bit, you tilt it, vertical, horizontal, whether you put a lens accessory on there or choose one of the lens options inside the smartphone. So that's step number one. Step number two is where do you position the main visual anchor in the frame? That's step number two. Step number three, and there's so many, there's so many there. There's like uh, left to right. There's uh, diagonals. There's uh, the rule of thirds, the rule of odds, pi grid. Uh, there's so, there's so many, uh, and that's just positioning. Where do you want the attention of the viewer to go first? That's what that's all about, and creating space around it. Number three is supporting elements. Where do you position the supporting elements? So. One of the uh, most recognised definitions of composition is where you place the main subject, and how, or how where you position the elements in the scene, and how they all interact with each other. That's that's kind of a de definition that a lot of people use. So once we've done step two, we've positioned the main subject. Step number three is where we look at all the other focal points. So we look at the hierarchy. We go, okay, we've looked there. Now we want them to look here, here, here. This is how we're going to encourage them to look at them in this order. Uh, how we bring them back, how do we avoid them going out of the frame, how do we create depth, because that's one thing that's missing in a lot of the definitions out there is we're creating depth by where we position the supporting elements, 
what do we need to take out that's distracting the the viewer uh, that's it's huge there's so much there it's uh, it's very exciting and then we have step number four now step number four is one that you don't see in a lot of composition um, guides courses books and that is the editing side of it now, I, I do have over a hundred techniques and tips and this is not mostly made up of the editing so I haven't cheated <laughs> there's plenty of techniques in there where I've grouped things into one technique or one tip so if uh, if someone's going to get a bit pedantic and say oh Mike but you know adding a vignette is not a compositional technique well I would say yes it is because we go back to uh, what is composition composition is about directing it's about attracting uh, holding and directing the attention of the viewer and a vignette does that so adding a vignette in your editing darkens the, the outside frame to pull the viewer's attention back into the center and that's what that's what how is that any different from framing so putting making sure we've got a, a building on either side of the photo or a tree on either side of the photo for that symmetry and draw that attention back into the center of the frame a vignette does the same thing there's been studies done for art appreciation design uh, all sorts of different fields where Scientists will, will will put these goggles on on people's uh, faces and they'll look at a scene and then they measure and they have a heat map to show where the point of fixation is and the eye movements and track the eye movements and that sort of thing. And high contrast, color, emphasis of the, the size, faces, there's all these elements and all these things that kind of attract our attention. So in editing, if we can use that to our advantage and go, you know what, I actually want to pull your attention into this corner. I'm just going to do a localized edit, an area-specific edit, and I'm going to brighten up that area. And I think it's just as important to some of these other uh, techniques that we put in there. So that's the four steps. Positioning the, again, preparing the camera, positioning the main subject, positioning the supporting contextual elements, and then editing to enhance that viewer experience. So at the end of this course, that is now available, very excited. It's took, taken me more than three months to put together. <laughs> uh, like I said, I want you to be intuitive with your composition, but I also one of the other outcomes, uh, the main outcomes is that you can now, you will be able to then go and look at your some of your favorite photos or photos that inspire you, and you'll be able to break them down and look at them and go, why does this work for me? What? Why does this look better than other photos of the same same uh, subject or genre or, or location and look at how either yourself or the photographer what conscious and subconscious and and flukes <laughs> if you like what things happened in this photo that make this work and you and you look at where did they position themselves think about it you know you can't see because <laughs> it's a two-dimensional photo but think about where they've positioned themselves did they have a vantage point of elevation did they get down low uh, look at where did they position uh, the visual elements where does my eye go to first how did they make my eye go there was it the size of it was it the space was it that they've clearly gone and brightened that area or sharpened that details it's so cool. Once you can start, because that's one of the biggest things is we we struggle with is we can't articulate what it is that we like the photo. We just go, oh, that's aesthetically pleasing or it's balanced or there's harmony. Uh, but when you can go in and break down and analyze a photo like that, it's super cool. It's really cool. And it, it'll bring so much more enjoyment to your photography when you can start implementing these sort of things and, and understanding how the visual literacy side of photography works. So, the link to find out more is in the description, show notes below, and uh, any questions, reach out anytime. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.